When life knocks you down, do you bounce back or do you drown in your emotions? The struggle is real and you're not alone. It's impossible to get through life without experiencing a setback. I fail a number of times and everyone does, but that's okay. Failures come in all forms, failing a grade, losing a promotion, to losing someone very important in your life. Some of us are better at picking ourselves up, dusting ourselves off, and yes, starting all over again. When bad things happen, it's natural to feel down. Recovering from failure is all about how well or how badly you are able to manage the negative emotions that failure brings in. Some of this is learned behavior and some has to do with personality. When I say personality, there are two types. One is the approach oriented person and the other who is an avoided person. Let me explain. Say there is a mountain and this approach oriented person sees the mountain and decides to climb it. Knowing that pitfalls may be a part of the journey but they are prepared for that. If and when the worst happens, failing utterly in the attempt, this person takes it in stride. It is not that failure doesn't matter to this approach-oriented person. Of course, it does matter. But the recovery is associated by the approach mindset, as is the ability to take on this challenge again or to decide that it's time to quit and set their sights elsewhere. But the avoidant person looks at the mountain and imagines all the terrible things that could happen to him. All the what-ifs, setbacks, and that's what exactly they wanted to avoid. Their strategies end up more focusing on the pitfalls rather than actually climbing the mountain. Now let me ask you, would you rather be an approach-oriented person or an avoidant person? I know you're going to say the former. In today's video, we are going to explore five powerful ways successful people use to bounce back from a failure. It's disappointing when life knocks you down. It's easy to drop into self-pity and blame the world for all your problems. Or this why me, why only me thought may play out in your head like a bad record. However, just because you derail doesn't mean that you have failed altogether or it even doesn't mean that you didn't fail. How to do this? How to reframe a failure? Reframing means changing the way you think or talk to yourself about a stressful event. Instead of saying, I give up, I'm a failure, shift your internal narrative and say something like, this is merely a setback. I will get through this because I'm a strong person. Try thinking about the situation as if it has happened to someone else to make sure you don't get swept back into the heat of the moment. This kind of thinking motivates you to take action the next time and take responsibility instead of playing the blame game. This is true in every area of life, be it personal or professional. Yes, after all you need it. Don't beat yourself up about it. I believe that self-compassion helps you face life challenges with more grace and ease. No matter what setback you encounter in life, whether it was something within your control or not, show yourself some self-compassion. When you take time to be kind to yourself, you are reinforcing the idea that you deserve to be treated well. Self-compassion acknowledges the reality that you are having an unhealthy moment, not an unhealthy life. You always have a choice what the next moment is going to be. The next time that chaos strikes, ask yourself what you need in order to feel more grounded. When everything in the environment feels uneasy, showing yourself love is acknowledging and accepting that you aren't perfect and neither is life. Yes, figuring out what caused you to fail will not only help you to feel better about what happened, but will allow you to address whatever you contributed to the end result. Were there any details or signals you missed? Were you thinking you were on the right track when you weren't? Were you so focused on positive things, the good things people around you were telling, that you managed to miss the importance of the critics? Sometimes we get to miss these very obvious signals in a situation because we pay much more attention to the wins, the things that are going right, 
than the losses or mistakes. Focusing on your mistakes makes you feel more empowered and learn from your mistakes and bounce back fast when life knocks you down. You might have known one thing about successful people is that they take responsibility for their mistakes. Sometimes we fail because we just don't have the skill set to accomplish the goal we have set for ourselves and we fail to recognize it. Other times, because failing is too awful to contemplate and the culture keeps saying that quitters never win. We put our faith in grit and perseverance because we don't see an alternative. That's especially true for those people who avoid problems. A setback may have not been your fault. However, that doesn't mean that you can't take ownership of it. When circumstances are unfavorable, it takes guts to say, I'm owning this, accept and take charge. Life acts in funny ways. What may seem like the worst thing in the world may turn out to be a blessing in disguise. You should ask yourself, did life really knock me down or is life steering me in other direction? The second that things aren't going our way, we often incline to think of it as a bad thing. But what if it isn't? By looking at the bright side of the difficult situation, you will feel more empowered to find a solution to the problem. If you can see, the glass half full, you will be a happier person overall, regardless of life's knockdowns. Understanding what you contributed to the failure and learning, what you can do about yourself in the wake of a failure is certainly a step in the right direction. Like this video, if you agree to this and comment below, what are the steps you take to bounce back from a failure? That's it for today. Signing off. See you in next video. Bye.